Hello, this is Mr. Buffington from Simplify Academy, and today we are dividing decimals and decimals. Makes it a little bit more complicated, but we'll go through it step by step and help make sure that you're completely confident with it by the time we get to the end of this lesson. Let's do it. We will divide decimals by decimals, and we're going to practice a lot. So here's what happens. First, we need to address what do we do when the second number is a decimal. It's a little different than what we did before, so I'm going to walk you through that first using a whole number, and then we're going to combine the two decimal ideas. This is what this question would look like, 27 divided by 3 tenths. Whenever you have a situation like this with a decimal on the outside of the division symbol there, what we're going to do is move the decimal to the right. A friend of mine said it's the ball to the wall, right? We have to move this decimal over as many spaces as it takes to get it over all the way to that division wall. The decimal inside that fraction symbol, or division symbol, I'm sorry, inside the division symbol moves the same number of spaces and we have to fill in zeros. With the number 27, we don't have a decimal written, which means the decimal is at the end. And so we switch, shift it over one space there and fill in the zeros. Now we'll divide like normal. We pretend that this says 3 on the outside and 270 on the inside, or in other words, 270 divided by 3. Divide it like normal. How many times does 3 go into 2? zero. How many times does three go into 27? Nine times. Nine times three is 27. We'll subtract and get zero. Then we bring that zero down and fill in all of our zeros. That's how we do this basic division where you have that decimal on the outside. Our final answer is what's up top there, 90. Now I want you to try it with this Again, pretty straightforward division question, 121 divided by um, 11 hundredths. Go ahead and try that out and come back to the video and see how you did. When we set this up, we set it up this way and we shift the decimal two spaces to the right, meaning that on the inside of that um, um, division there, we would shift this two places to the right and fill in two zeros. So we pretend like this is one, uh, 12,100 divided by 11 and just divide like normal. How many times does 11 go into 12? Once we multiply 1 times 11, subtract and get 1. We bring that 11 down. How many times does 11 go into 11? Once. 1 times 11 is 11, subtract, and then we're just at this point filling in zeros, basically lots of zeros. Um, until we get it filled in. Those zeros are important, which is why we need to shift that decimal two places to the right inside the division symbol there. Um, but the math as far as it goes is pretty easy to do. We're just zero, zero, zero. All right. Um, now, just a quick reminder of what to do with decimals. If there's a decimal outside of that division symbol or that little house or whatever that's created, um, you shift it to the right and you shift it to the right inside the same number of spaces. If there's decimals inside after you've moved them to the right, then you move the decimal up and divide like normal. That's it. These are the two basic steps. So the decimals on the outside will shift it to the right. We shift that decimal on the inside, the same number of spaces to the right. And then if there is a decimal on the, um, on the inside after that, we've done that, we're going to move it up. Quickly, before we move on, just a quick recap. If there is no decimal written, and we talked about this earlier with both of our examples, if there's no decimal written, it means it's on the outside. So 3 is 3.0, 26 is 26.0. Um, this is the most common example, $7 is $7. It's not changing the value of it, it's just adding a decimal and zeros. It means the same thing. So if there's no decimal written on the number, it means that the decimal's on the end. And then we'll move it from there. 
Given all of that information, it's time to try out the double decimal question. Here we have it. 81 hundredths divided by 3 tenths. First off, we're going to start moving, taking care of the decimal outside of that division symbol, and then we're going to move to the decimal on the inside. The outside decimal moves to the right. Therefore, um, the one inside is going to move that same number of spaces. Then the decimal inside will then move up. See how that worked? Now we're going to pretend none of those decimals exi exist, and we're going to just do 81 divided by 3. Let's do it. How many groups of 3 are there inside of 8? 2. 2 times 3 is 6. We subtract. Now we'll bring that 1 down. How many groups of 3 inside of 21? 7. 21 times, or 7 times 3 is 21. We subtract and we get 0. That's it. Once we get a 0 at the bottom and there's no other numbers inside, we're done. So our final answer with this is 2.7. It's the same steps for long division with a couple of little added details on the top. All right, let's try it out. I want you to pause and practice. Try this one out. Solve it and then start the video again and we'll look through what I did. This is the way I set it up. I shift my decimal over to the right one space on the outside and on the inside. Then I move it up. Now I'm going to divide like normal. How many groups of four instead of inside of five? One. Then I multiply one times four, write the response there. I'm going to subtract, bring that six down, and then ask myself how many groups of four inside of 16? Well, there's four of them. We multiply four times four, subtract, and we're done. 1.4. Hopefully that's the answer that you got. If not, you can see the steps there and kind of look for where you might have made a misstep. But that's the solution. That's it right there. Now these questions become more complicated by adding more decimals or numbers uh, after the decimal. But really, all of them are following those same steps. So if you've got those steps down, you've got this whole lesson down. From now on, it's just pausing and practicing. We're going to give you bigger numbers. They're going to be a little bit more complex, but you're going to know all the steps and you've got it. So go ahead and try this one out. Here's how we'd set it up. We would shift the decimal over, bing, then up and divide like normal. There are four groups of three inside of 13. Subtract, bring the eight down. How many groups of three inside of 18? Well, six. Six times three is 18 and we are done. There it is. It's much quicker for me because I've already solved it. <laughs> so if you're not going quite as fast as I did, that's okay. That's why you pause and practice and then watch the full solution to see that all of your numbers match up with all of my numbers. Let's do another one. And this one is, again, more numbers. 8 and 813 thousandths divided by 3.5. Try it out. Go. That's how I would set it up. I'm going to shift my decimal one place. Then I'm going to bring it up. Now I'm going to divide like normal, pretending this says 8,813 divided by 35 with a decimal there. Okay, that's all we're doing. How many groups of 35 inside of 88? Two. Two times 35 is 70. I'm going to subtract, bring the one down and ask myself how many groups of 35 inside of 181. There's five, and five times 35 gives me 175. I'll subtract, get a six, bring it down, and I have 63. How many groups of 35 inside of 63? Well, there's just one. One times 35 is 35. Now, we have not done this yet, but when you're doing these questions, if you get a remainder, you're going to add a zero, bring it down, and keep going. Just like with normal long division. There are eight groups of 35 inside of 280, because eight times 35 is 280, 
and we are finished. That is our final answer. Now, if you want to see me solving these in real time without the answers already prepared on slides, go ahead and watch the the um, the worksheet video because I work through them and it's much slower when I don't have the prepared answers. So if you want to see me actually working through doing the multiplication and doing figuring that out and giving some more tips and tricks for long division, definitely watch the recording, the video for the the um, solutions to the worksheet. All right, because I go through every question from the worksheet doing it by hand. It's not pre-prepared like this. My handwriting is a little bit more messy than this, obviously, but it's a good thing to check out. All right, next, this is um, our practice question, something a little bit new. Um, we're going to go ahead and to make it a little bit different, show you what I like to show you and that's that you can write this as a fraction. You never really would write it as a fraction because we don't usually put decimals inside of a fraction, but just a reminder that a fraction just means division so that when we get to fractions later on, you're not worried or scared or, or you feel like you've never seen them before. A fraction just means division. Let's set it up and solve. You will move the decimals outside to the right, Move the decimals inside the same number of spaces, so it will go over to there, and then up. Now you're going to divide like normal. Pause the video, try it out. Show me what you've got. Well, you can't really show me, but go ahead. Here we're back. I'm going to show you the steps I did. How many groups of 23 inside of 92? Four of them. Four times 90, uh, 23 is 92, so we are done. Now, you notice the answer there is four. That's, we don't have to write the decimal at the end of it. Just like when I ask you how old you are, you wouldn't say I'm, I'm 25 point something or I'm, I'm 13 point something, I'm 8 point something, right? You just say your age, right? And that's the way that we work with decimals as well. If it's on the end, you don't necessarily say it. That was our last work question together before you can go take the worksheet. Things to remember, definitely move the decimals if they're on the outside. The decimal goes up if it's on the inside. Follow all of the steps and you will be fine. The only way this is made more complex is by making the numbers a little bit bigger. And honestly, it's the same steps, it's just doing it more. So extra practice is extra good. You've got this. I hope that video was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.